Coming up in tonight's review, I'll be taking a look at both lineups. We'll be talking about the incidents and the goals. We'll take a look at the league table. We'll hear from Rafa Benitez. And unfortunately, we've had to cut 40 from the video because it was too windy down there. there what's coming up in the review let's get on with it so Newcastle drew away a 2-2 at Bournemouth we're going to be having for Rafa Benitez which you've just seen when he had from 40 for another channel as well so let's crack on let's take a look at the lineups for you the only real surprise for me regarding Newcastle was the Diame one I didn't expect more Diame to be in that lineup I thought John Joe Selvey would come in but apart from that, I thought Rafa would go with five at the back once more. There was some talk amongst fans that he'll go a flat back four. Uh, we always thought he'd go back to, to st stick to the five, which has been working. So he stuck to the five. And apart from that, no other real surprises. Let's have a look at Bournemouth. Uh, we've, we've got it almost spot on. We would have had 11 out of 11, but Sermon got injured, which meant David Brooks then came into centre midfield, which allowed Jordan Ibe to come in that right wing position. Look, we've touched upon it all week. If you keep the likes of uh, Brooks, you keep the likes of Wilson, King and Fraser quiet, you'll go on and win the game. Fortunately, Newcastle didn't keep one of them quiet, which we'll talk about in the moment. The first half in particular, then, it, was, it wasn't it was a great thing to watch, let's be honest. It was a poor showing of football between two Premier League sides, which are almost safe. Very hit and miss. Uh, Perez had a couple of shots, which deflected, uh, which was easily saved by Boric. You know, the best chance for Bournemouth in that first half was Ryan Fraser bursting through. For, uh, funny enough, off a Newcastle counter-attack. The midfield's been wiped out. John Riedlin so far in advance. Fraser's in on goal. He's blasted it lower, hits the outside of the post. But against the winner play, a fantastic free kick by Solomon Rondon. Brilliant, wasn't it? Bournemouth had a corner. And this is the thing about Miguel Almiron. There's some people who criticise Almiron, but this is what he's fantastic at in this side because he gets us up the pitch 10, 20, 30 yards. He picks the ball up inside his own half. He starts running. He's on his own. He's against three or four Bournemouth the defenders. He keeps running at them, keeps running at them. And then he, he cleverly wins a free kick. I think Almiron's looking for it. He cleverly does it. Jordan Ibe fouls him. Up steps Solomon Rondon. What a free kick, man. Unbelievable free kick. Just pings that into the top corner. It's my first direct free kick since Henri Savé against West Ham. Thank you very much for Rob, our stat man, for that. Um, so, fantastic to go in at half time. That'll be on goal of the month, surely. Brilliant 1 0 up. We've got a good record down there as well. We haven't been beaten in the Premier League down there as well. So, going to half time. Okay. But we've got a horrendous, that's one thing you want, right? The first 10 minutes of that first half, just settle yourselves in. Bournemouth were all hour. They were literally all over. The penalty incidents, right, I've said this already. I actually believe it's a penalty. What I'm, what I'm most concerned about is the lack of consistency with Premier League referees. Because that happens four, five, six, seven times a match and it never gets given. But for some reason, this one is given. It's a foul. He's got his hands on him. It's soft, but it's a foul. But it's the consistency of referee in this league, which is really poor. Because we'll see it tomorrow's games. We'll see it on Monday that this will happen and nothing will be given. Even though it's a foul, the referees don't give it. For whatever reason, Ballerina Mike Dean decides to give it. Fernandez ought to know better, of course. Joshua King steps up. Sends to Bravka the wrong way. It's 1-1. And it's all to play for with well over 50 minutes to go. Bournemouth go close again with Mepham header just goes wide. And then they almost scored again where it's uh, calamity defending by Newcastle. The ball is looped over Martin Dubravka. Paul Dummett does absolutely fantastic to hook it back off the line. Mike Dean then blows and we're thinking, well, no, what's he blown for here? Is he blown for a goal? Has he blown for a penalty? Thankfully, he's blown for a foul this time on Ake on Fernandez. So that's, so that's a foul for Newcastle, thankfully, because we all thought that was a penalty or a goal or whatever, you know. But Bournemouth went on to score. Fernandez at fault. The counter-attack again by Bournemouth. We'll touch upon this in the, in the previews. They're absolutely brilliant at it. The play had the ball on the right. Slanky, the substitute, is on. He's got the ball. He nicks it off Fernandez. Fernandez is poor. He's asleep. He should be doing a lot better. He doesn't want to do with it inside the box. He's like looking for options. Can't really get the ball under control. He lays it off to Joshua King. It's a fantastic finish. Martin Dubravka can do nothing about it. It's just a brilliant finish. 2-1. 
with eight or nine minutes to go and you're thinking game hour aren't you i know rafa benitez rang the changes he brought on mutu which was brilliant to see yoshinori mutu fantastic to see him great to see shelby back because like i say should shelby should have started i personally think he should have but the equaliser and the dying minutes it's nice to actually score late goal rather than having it against us but the ball is pinged over to Yedlin. He has the ball on the right hand side. He looks up, he crosses and misses Rondon. But there's Matt Ritchie in that left wing back position. Gets his second goal of the season on the volley against his former side. Unbelievable technique to finish that. Brilliant. Doesn't know whether to celebrate. He's like half laughing. Newcastle go and nick the point. Which is fantastic. I think we deserved it just because of the effort. Let's quickly take a look at the league table before we hear from Rafa. So Burnley got beat. Yes, I know most of the other teams have been not been playing the day. Some of them are in FA Cup action, some of them aren't. Um, but to point gained, you will say now Newcastle are on 35 points. Looking at that league table, I think I think Palace will probably pull away. I think Brighton will because they've got two games in hand on us. And I think it's probably be down between Southampton, Cardiff and Burnley. I would like to say Burnley Percy stay up. The more northern clubs stay in this league, the better for us for away travels. <laughs> Um, let's quickly hear what uh, Rafa Benitez said about excuse me about that draw. Yes, I think we have lost two points. You thought you lost two points? Yes. Um, I think that we did enough, and especially going 1-0 uh, up uh, at the beginning of the second half to manage the game and, and to get three points. So too many things that were against us, and then we have to react. And then I thought that the game was... Nearly lost, and then it was a great goal from Richie, and happy for that, but uh, disappointed because uh, we could get three points. Maybe the way that we were playing and managing the game, uh, we could win the game. Yeah, things, uh, as you say, football. Sometimes it's, these things happen. So he was uh, doing well for us in defence, but uh, to score against his uh, former team and the goal that he scored, I'm sure that he's happy, and at the same time, he's making happy all the Newcastle United fans. We have to keep going, so the job is still not done. So we have to keep winning the games. I think it could be 38 points, it depends. Obviously, 40 is a guarantee for me. I think 38 uh, will be enough, but uh, so we have to keep winning if we can. Yeah, obviously, I was not watching that, so I was more concerned about what was going on during the game and what happened uh, in some uh, situation that we, we were not happy with that. but. Uh, the other things, obviously, you want to to stay calm and then just celebrate. The penalty of the Andre in the 10 minutes that was not given, or yeah, because maybe you can check that. You can check the pulling of uh, Rondon, and then we can check the other one that you will give 100 penalties. So things like that is is football, and then you know that you will have different opinions. But um, we're not happy with that, obviously. And that was Rafa's thoughts. And there you have it. That is the wrap-up for the review. You've seen the player ratings earlier on today. You've seen the live chat. You've seen the, ins the live chat, the live video, the quick thoughts as well. Um, we've got the analyst video to come tomorrow as well. So the videos don't stop rolling. If you'd like to vote for us for the commitment and the content that we put out, not just across YouTube, we do it all over social media now. Got a gain in a good following. We're almost at 40,000 across everything now. But we'd love to get nominated for a blogging award. Just to be nominated would be brilliant. Have a look at this. Thank you very much for watching. ta -da. Vote in the Football Blogging Awards 2019. We'd love to get your vote on three categories. The first one is being the best club content creator. Here at Newcastle Fans TV, we have a video uploaded every day and we're one of the only few channels to beat the majority of away games and every single home game. We also produce some of the best away vlogs out there. Vote for us for the best vlogger and also finally the best social media account. The lads on Facebook and Twitter are inundated with updates from every single day from Newcastle United News. Vote for us, link is in the description, just to be in the same room as the likes of the Red Men, Arsenal Fan TV and Full Time Devils means the world to us. Thank you.